All right, so for the ones out there who know me, y'all know I love Logic Pro. I've made some of my biggest records inside of Logic Pro. And you guys also know how much I love the drum machine designer. So I feel like every year I need to make a video showcasing how dope the drum machine designer is. And I'm going to do another one today, especially for all of the new people who are subscribed to me who haven't watched some of my older videos. I'm going to show you guys how dope the drum machine designer is. Let's go ahead and get to it. Bolo! All right, before we get started, if you guys need anything for your studio, make sure you guys go ahead and click mysounds.com link in the description and get you something for your studio. They have a whole bunch of stuff on the site that requires no credit or background check, meaning all you have to do is order it, they'll ship it to you, and then you just make monthly installments on the equipment. All they just need is a credit or debit card hooked to the account so they can take the money out monthly. Now, it's not everything on the site, but it is a whole bunch of stuff on the site that you guys can go ahead and get right now with no credit or background check. So go ahead and click that zounds.com link in the video description and get you some gear today. All right, you guys know how much I rock with analog cases because they make the best cases that will protect your musical gear. However, did you guys know that they make very dope stands as well? You need to check out the XTS stands. These things are crazy. They come in two different sizes and these things are made of premium steel. If you're someone like me who uses their MPC Live 2 or if you use like a Machine Plus or a Machine or like a SP404 or even like an iPad or smaller DJ gear, these stands are made for professional musicians just like you. And the good thing about it is you don't have to break the bank to get the stands. They're very inexpensive. So if you're a musician that is looking to get a professional grade stand, make sure you guys go ahead and click Click my analog cases link in the description and get you a stand today. All right, as we all know, Logic pretty much has the best sampler of all the dolls. Okay, you can do so much with the sampler inside of Logic Pro, it is crazy. And you can do this actually on the Logic Pro version on the iPad. I'm not the biggest fan of the iPad version because of some file management stuff. And of course, you got to pay a subscription for it. I'm not really into the subscription thing, but it is still dope. It works exactly the same on the iPad version as well. But today I'm gonna be talking about the drum machine designer and inside of the drum machine designer is the sampler as well. So you can do everything that you would do normally with the sampler, but you can do it inside of the drum machine designer, okay? I made videos about this as well. I just wanna do another video just explaining how to do this with your one-shot samples and with a loop as well. So let's go ahead and open up the drum machine designer so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. So let's get to it. All right, so we're in Logic Pro right now. Let's go ahead and open up the drum machine designer. And we're gonna click on this right here and I'm gonna show you guys this again, all right? So this is the drum machine designer and this thing is awesome, okay? Love this thing, love what you can do in it. Now, when you open this thing up, it automatically comes in a track stack. So if you open this thing like that, as you guys can see, it has a track already opened up when you open this up right here, okay? So the reason why is because we already have a instrument in here, but it's blank, it's not, there's nothing in it right now. So what you can do is you can actually go right here to your uh, little finder uh, window right here, and then you actually can go in here and you can actually import your sounds into the drum machine designer, just like how you would do, like, you know, on an MPC, you will just assign it to a pad. So what you can do is I can go into my one of my favorite folders. I got my X Factor kit. I can put an 808 in here. So I'm going to slide this right here. And then let's say, for instance, I want to go back. I want to add a clap. Sounds good right there. And then let's just say, for instance, I want to add a hi-hat. So I'll probably use that one right there, okay? So I have a bass, I have a clap, and I have a hi-hat. So if I wanna just use these sounds just how they are, I can hit the bass right here. So this is my bass, then I have my clap, and I have my hi-hat. So if I just want to use this like this, right here on this main screen, I can use all of these sounds right here. On each one of these, I have other controls on here. I have a classic, I have a one-shot, I have a slice, 
I have a recorder. I have all of this stuff in here. So right now we're on sampler main. If we want to go to sampler detail, we can go right here and we can make more changes as well. So right here, I can turn this bass right here. I can turn this polyphony down to mono. And then the clap, I ain't going to worry about that. And then the hi-hat, I'm not going to worry about that as well. I'm going to just leave, leave the polyphony on those. They're fine. So now if I want to play some... I'm not the best finger drummer like that, but as you guys can see, you can play it like that. Now, the power of this instrument comes when you open up the track stack. So when you open this up right here, you guys can see that it has all of the sounds in here. But now when you click on each individual sound, now you can play it across all the keys. And they're totally independent now. So when you want to play your claps or whatever you want to play, I can go right here to my clap. Oops. It's a little too low. So I got my claps right here. I have my hi-hat right there. And then I have my bass right here. And it's just depending on where you put the octaves at on the keyboard. You can have full control over each sound. So now that's how we can have a full control. And even when we switch over into our mixer, we have the open track stack. So now each sound right now is on its own separate track inside of the mixer. So we can mix it that way as well. So if I want to go right here and change the clap, I can go into here and then let me go ahead and push it right here. And as you guys can see, the clap is on its own track as well. And then the hi-hat is on its own track as well. That is what makes this thing very dope. Now, this is not just for drums. Let's go a little bit deeper. If we're in here and say, for instance, we want to add maybe a sample in here. So I pulled up a sample from Splice. So I can go right here into my desktop. I have a sample from Splice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the loop and I'm going to slide it right on to a pad. And as you guys can see, I have the loop right here on the pad. If I want to play it. When we do that, you see it plays the whole sample out. Now what we can do is now if we want to go ahead and uh, go back into our sampler detail. We can change the polyphony of this sample to mono. All right. Then we can go back to sampler main right here and then we can go to slice and it automatically slices it up because it's doing it by the transients. But what I like to do is a lot of times I like to do equal divisions. And of course, if you know the sample is like a four bar, eight bar, 12 bar loop or whatever, you can just do equal divisions. And then now you have the sample in equal divisions. So if we want to go and play this sample, what we can do is we can go right here and then we can go and select on the actual sample. And then what we can do is And as you guys can see, we can actually play this sample back sliced up and it's already ready to go. Now that we have all that done, we can go ahead and create a whole beat. Now we can either do it regularly like this. We can have all of our sounds, you know what I'm saying? We can have them all in here and they're pretty much ready to go. However, what we have to do is when we're using like a sample or whatever, we're gonna have to do all of these individually. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and make a really quick beat just using this sample and everything inside of the drum machine designer. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this tempo to uh, match the tempo first, and then I'm gonna turn my quantize on. I like to use the auto quantize on. And let's go ahead and put this in here. All right, so we got that in there. Let's play it back. All right, so cool. So now what we can do is we can add some hi-hats into this. So we can go right here. 
And I'm going to add this hi-hat right here. I'm going to probably use this note right here. And we're just going to add a very simple hi-hat. Or what we can do is we still have all the controls that we usually would have. So we can right-click. We can create a MIDI region right here. Stretch that out. Then I can go into here, find out which hi-hat I like. I can go in here, and I can actually pencil in my hi-hat. Or I can go in here and select the brush tool right here. And then I can hold the brush tool on whichever one I want to use, and I can take this and I can brush it out like that. But I actually want to change this up right here. I want to turn the quantize down to a 1 8 quantize real quick. So I just simply want to just brush this across. And then now, once I brush this across, let's open this up a little bit bigger. So I have that in here, and then I can easily go in here and say, for instance, I want to, you know, add some, you know, some other notes in here so I can actually go up. So I can change this right here and add those notes too. And I can change, you know, just add like different stuff in here uh, from right here. And you can just keep, you know, adding stuff in here like that. You can, you can add different random notes so I can... And I probably add some like right here, just to just for the tutorial. So that's just real quick. This is just for the tutorial purposes right here. So let's go ahead and repeat that. And then now I'm gonna add a clap in here. I like that right there. So I'm gonna add a clap in here. All right, so now that we have that in there, we can add the bass. And of course, we have to find the key of the bass, and I think this is in B minor. So, so we have it in B minor. Let's go ahead and add some really quick notes to it. And it's that easy. And it's not just for this genre of music. You can do it for hip hop samples or whatever. Now, the cool thing about it is, as you guys can see, we have all of these individual sounds. But when I play it, you guys can see it is playing in that stack folder with all of the sounds in there, almost kind of like an aux track. So if we want to make any type of mix changes or whatever, for it to affect all of the sounds, instead of us creating an aux track, we have this folder already made for us right here to where we can add effects to it if we want to. So if we wanted to like even EQ it, right? We can go in here, I can press the EQ, and I can actually sweep it. And it affects all the sounds in there. And then if we want to make changes on our individual tracks, we can still do that as well. Now, another thing is when you want to export this, we can actually export this to where all the tracks can be individually separated as well. And if we wanted to save this, if we want to save these particular sounds inside of this kit, we can actually save it. It's a little weird how to save it. You actually kind of got to like to go inside of here and then you can save it and then you have to like save the kit into one of these like library sounds inside of here. OK, I already have like a kit saved already, but you will have to like it, it's a special way how to save it. But it's not that hard to do. OK, you just pr pretty much have to just go in here and save it. Then it's, it shows like the empty kit and all that stuff like that. And then what you do is you just go ahead and just save it and you can save it inside of here. And it'll actually save it to where you can just pull it up on the side over here and then pretty much you're done. It's not that hard to do. But like I said before, the drum machine designer is dope. And I'm telling you guys, you need to start using it more because this is one of the best features 
in Logic Pro. All right, there it is, the drum machine designer in Logic Pro. This thing is a very powerful tool that you guys can use. If you do not have Logic, eh, you might wanna check it out. It's actually pretty dope. And then once you pay for it one time, you get free upgrades. You ain't gotta pay for it again. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys learned something from it. And like I always say, peace out.